Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Lumentop Geek, brand new keychain light from Lumentop. I do apologize if I sound terrible, pretty much everyone in the house has been sick non-stop for like a month, and we just got done with a bout of the flu, despite having flu shots, so, you know, the show's got to go on guys, so we're going to talk about the Geek here, which is a really large and fairly complicated uh, keychain flashlight, so we're going to go over the packaging first, then we'll go into the stats, uh, what you're going to get with this is a couple little lumen top bunnies that come with it a uh, lanyard bright orange high vis and a big uh, kind of o-ring for your gasket just comes in a simple cardboard box no biggie there all right let's move on to facts and figures all right, you can see here we have a high mode of 350 for 30 minutes, 125 for an hour, 25 for nine hours, and a moonlight of one lumen for 43 hours. And you also have your side light modes as well, which we're gonna skim over because there's a lot to talk about here and we wanna keep this video as short as possible. IPX6, so you don't wanna definitely be uh, dunking this thing in the water for anything more than you have to. And it says a 70 meter throw, but uh, you know. All right. So the user interface, we're going to give you a uh, look here before I put this away. I'm going to give you an extra second or two to look at this because it is so complicated. That way you can kind of come through and pause this. If you ever lose this and need to come back, so you can just kind of pause it and look. All right, so that's enough of that. So we're going to talk about the light and then go to the interface in a minute because the interface is so complicated. I want to get the other stuff out first because I know I'm going to lose you on the interface, so I'd rather get the other stuff out of the way. So this is a USB rechargeable. You can see it has actually a fairly nice, well-protected USB port with a very nice thick boot to it. The back has a screw open case, so you can't open this. If there is that possibility, you could replace the battery in here. It is a LiPo battery, so um, if that sort of fail you and you were thrifty enough, you could probably replace that battery on here. On the side, you have your uh, indicator LEDs, your side LED, and your uh, power. Oop flip it around your power and mode buttons you can see here it also has kind of a really nice kind of, I wouldn't call it a bezel really but some really nice stainless steel accents in it your uh, lens is uh, an optic it's a diffused optic very nice and the wide lanyard holder so you could definitely run that through maybe a little nylon strap or maybe make a paracord fob or something along those lines quick size comparison we're going to show you the tip and the tiny. Oops. Just to give you an idea as far as size, you can see this is the biggest of the bunch. And you can also see it is substantially wider as well. It is a uh, very big light, but you also have a much bigger battery and a little more added into it that you're not going to get with your smaller, more inexpensive light. So let's get these out of the way. All right, um, interface quick. Uh, we're gonna go, we're not gonna go over everything because it just like I said it's gonna take too long. So basic operation is you're gonna turn this on by hitting that button, and you're gonna cycle through your different modes with that. And of course your power button will turn that off again. Simple, huh? Now you can of course double click will bring you into strobe mode where you have a strobe, SOS, and beacon, and um, that as well. So now you also can utilize your side light by holding this in for three seconds and that will turn on your side light which you can then cycle through between that. Now while the light's off if you push your side your mode button it will give you your battery indicator which what you have is a uh, red green blue LED here so the blue will light up showing this thing's fully charged um, so you don't have to memorize how many blinks or what colors you know you can generally just tell red green blue you know it's charged. You know, obviously red's pretty synonymous with being, you know, not charged. So I think it makes it very, very simple, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, um, you can also, I think I showed you from off, you can access that side light as well. And it brings you into, sometimes, uh, brings you into that uh, beacon mode. I don't know why it's doing that to me i think that's it's what the memory is on um but like i said the the interface is pretty complicated so i do have to mess around with this all right so we're going to set this over here refocus 
because we're going to talk about performance. Actually, we're going to talk about charging first. So hopefully by now your video is running up on the upper right hand corner and you can see this thing charge. And uh, I will put a little annotation as far as the charge time. And as you can see, as this thing goes along, the LEDs um, in the side, of course, are going to go from red, green, blue to indicate that this thing is full up. When it does fully charge, you're going to see that it does... Um, the light just shut itself off, which is awesome uh, because you don't have to worry about it trickle charging. Uh, whatever feature that is that makes it shut off, it is nice. That way you don't have to worry about overcharging and all that. Just really nice little feature. All right, so now that we've talked about that, we're going to talk and go to performance. Now, once again, we're going to bring in the tip and the tube because I've done quite a few runtime tests and I'm not sure what videos I'm going to edit in here. So we will... Uh, um, Hopefully not talk out my butt here. Um, all right, so I can compare these performance-wise. And what you're going to find with this light is the Geek is a regulated light, which basically means that there is circuitry in here which regulates the output, which means it's going to output a certain constant current. Um, so basically, if you were making a chart, you have to consider it this way. The output would be like, dun, 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 and then like fall off a cliff. So you're going to get a really bright light and then just brightness falls off the clip versus things like the tube here which would be like imagine this going going and slowly dropping down over time two different performance styles and why is that because in here you have the room for those circuitry to regulate it versus um you know the tip you know which you just don't have the room to do that so it is a nice regulated output and you'll see um and hopefully now at this point the video is going to pop up here on the side of the uh time lapse of this running and what you're going to see is this maintains its light for like 30 something minutes like a little i think it was like 33 minutes and then you're going to see your your side light's going to start blinking red and then this thing's going to drop down to low mode and um sit there so what you have is like i said is a very strong regulated 30 minutes of 300 plus lumens which is pretty cool so let's talk about lumen output now testing this with a ceiling bounce method which is what i usually do to confirm i came up with about 300 uh, lumens. Of course, it's very off because I'm not calibrated for this kind of lens and this kind of flashlight, but I definitely think their number versus my number, definitely within range. Being I'm calibrated for clear lenses, you know, obviously the fact that it's showing low makes sense. So that is one thing to note. So I think their numbers are pretty close, within reason. And the runtimes obviously also are within reason because I did get more than 30 minutes out of this on turbo. Um, so yeah, so performance-wise, as you can see, this thing, like I said, is a regulated light. Now, hopefully, maybe, um, at this point, I'll put in the, the comparison. I, I basically ran all my keychain lights all at once and uh, ran them just to see what's happened. Now, so what I want to explain is what you get for this. Now, your lumen top is going to be, like I said, really bright. It's going to run really bright at the same output for the runtime, and then it's going to drop off. Same thing goes with the tiny. Now, the tube, on the other hand is like i said is going to slowly fade um i think it's really important to note depending on what kind of light you want um if it is important for you for a light to fade slowly i mean this is probably not your best choice because you're really not going to get a ton of 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 notice when this thing starts to die i mean obviously you have your battery indicator and all that but but yeah given the amount of features this thing has and uh the fact that this is a very nice kind of serviceable product you know i mean it's only downfall is the size but at the same time you know if you don't want to use this on your keychain this would go very good on a backpack you know you could obviously strap this onto a backpack you could put this into your survival kits and all that so there's a lot of usefulness out of this it's pretty expensive but you're also getting a lot of light for the money you know you do have that side light and the and you know two lights you know a lot of good electronics in here which you don't see in a lot of keychain lights so there is a lot put into this that you're just not going to see with um, other keychain lights. So overall, I think this is a, a really nice product, but it's not. this is not going to be for everyone. This is a very complicated light. It's something for people who really um, want to invest in this, who are going to put it on their keys, use it daily, invest in that user interface. I mean, it's not going to be your benefit. If this is a light you pick up uh, once a month and walk out the door, it's going to be very difficult to keep that user interface going and uh, remember it. But uh, overall, guys, I think it's a really nice light for the money. It's really heavy duty. It's nice metal construction, very heavy, thick, kind of robust, and just built well and uh, really does well considering what it is.